Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. We look forward to studying with you today. My name is Tim Rumsey. Pastor David Salazar is joining me. And our lesson today is titled Becoming One Through His Love. This is the lesson for Monday, May 13. Well, let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that we can study together. We ask for your guidance and direction for your Holy Spirit's leading as we study this topic today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you've joined us the last couple of days this week, you know that we are looking at the subject, uh, Keys to Family Unity, certainly a subject and an issue that is important for all families today, uh, as uh, the devil is certainly attacking, especially Christian families, those that are uh, trying to follow the Lord, and it's not easy in this world. But the Bible promises us that God can give power, and we are looking at some of those promises and keys this week. Now, again, our uh, topic today is becoming one through his love. And I'd like to start by just um, reflecting a little bit on that last word, love. Uh, That's uh, the operative word here in our title. And um, at least in the English language, the word love uh, has become so overused and misused that in many ways it has lost its meaning. Um, imagine, if you so would, uh, a couple that has been married happily for 50, 60, even 70 years. Uh, I knew a couple that had been married for 70 years. And when they say, I love each other, it really means something, doesn't it? Uh, there is mm. a, a, Absolutely. A, a range of experiences, almost an entire lifetime of, of shared experiences, uh, that they they uh, can draw upon here. And so when a couple like this says, I love you, there is a great depth of meaning. Now let's contrast that with the same three words that might be spoken by you know, a couple of teenagers in the backseat of a car. And uh, it's same words, I love you, but uh, they mean, they can't mean the same thing, obviously. Uh, and in this case, love means something totally different. David, uh, I don't know about you, but I've been guilty at times I don't know if it's guilty, but I've used the word love in other ways as well, <laughs> such as, you know, I, I love my job. Uh, I love uh, going here or doing this. And then we even use it for food, don't we? Uh, I don't know what your well, favorite brother, food is, I mean, David. you have to love food. I mean, <laughs> don't you love food? <laughs> I, I do love food. I love food. I and there's, <laughs> there's some foods I love more. You know, if there's waffles there, I, I tell my wife, boy, I love this breakfast. And then, you know, on the vegetable meal, we do our best. Um But the point is, of course, that we use this word love in all sorts of ways. And again, in English, at least, it has almost completely lost its meaning. And so when we talk about uh, the love of Jesus or we talk about the kind of love that will unite and draw families together, what are we talking about? Is this the the cotton candy kind of love or the kind of love where I, I, I love my sports team? Or is it something deeper and stronger than that? That's what we want to look at. Well, today. you know, right. We're going to look yeah. into that. Uh, and Tim, I just wanted to say that it is true in a way. Sadly, we have lowered that word love for something that shouldn't be used in that depthness that, you know, the Bible speaks of. And uh, truly, uh, you know, instead of saying, I like this very much, I like this food, you know, we use love because we like to, you know, well, society has really modified the concept of love to a very, uh, is all about what you self-centrally like, you know, what you really, you know, what you don't want to live without, that, that's what you love. But it's, it's all about self and it's not about really giving to your, someone else. Now, of course, we can improve and we can change that concept and tr- hopefully we can teach our children to use the word love in a more proper way, you know, per se. And specifically, in your, you know, when you're mentioning, you know, teenagers, you know, using the word sporadically or, or really randomly for anything that is something that is you know is not really true correctly used and so we can improve that aspect uh, another thing you can do is um, 
learn our language. And uh, like in Spanish, like I speak Spanish, you know, they, we don't use that word love for many things. It's specifically used for something that you really have a lot of affection or, or, or true, you know, uh, your, 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 your desires, your, your feelings are really to someone else. That's when you use the mm -hmm. word love. But um, sadly, we speak English here and that's why we need to learn to use it properly. But we need to learn how we as Christians really need to learn how to love. That's right. Sounds like I need to learn Spanish. Uh, I'm understanding you, you need better, to, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that. Um, let's go to our Amen. first Bible text here. This is John chapter 15 and verse 13. And Jesus is uh, again trying to tell his disciples what is about to happen to him and also why he is going to allow this to happen, speaking of his death. And Jesus says here in John 15, verse 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Incredibly important uh, viewpoint on what true love is here. It's really a, a self-sacrificing principle of life, isn't it? That uh, if right. really not only understood but lived, uh, will transform everything we do. Uh, day in, day out, no matter who, we, who we're with, no matter what our feelings or emotions might be, this principle will guide our words and our actions. Uh, and it's this principle of selflessness. Uh, very important to understand in regards to love. Hmm. Well, you know, I wanted to uh, tell you that this love of agape love that we're talking about here, um, it, it's the type of love that very seldom is really experienced unless you have a connection with Christ. I, I don't think you can actually experience this without really loving the Lord uh, to some Absolutely. degree. I mean, I know that a mother, for example, can feel and oftentimes have that love that will give her life for the child. And that's sort of what we're talking about. And that is the why a mother has that gift from God to really experience that love, even without really trying to, you know, mentally say, I want to I choose to love the child like that. She just has the love in a way. But, you know, even in a more, in a daily way, in a, in a regular lifestyle, in a regular, you know, day-to-day -day basis, you, having that selfless love, it's, it's only a, a, a possible with Christ. That is what we talked about yesterday, connecting with ourselves to Christ, who is the source of that love. And I believe that's, that's right. how we are to be able to share that with others. But, um, yeah, it's important to keep this in mind. It's a God-given love. That's right. There's another verse in the lesson from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12, which says exactly this. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. Very clear that, uh, of course, the Bible also tells us God is love, so he's the source. But mm -hmm. very clear here in 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 12, that... We don't generate this on our on our own, like you're saying, David. Uh, obviously, not something you can go out and purchase. <laughs> There's only one source, and that is through mm -hmm. this personal connection or uh, being united with Christ. And uh, we need to recognize and realize this because if we feel like there's a lack of real love in our families, and <clears throat> honestly, there is in so many families, <laughs> there's a reason for that. It's because Christ is not the center of the family, which means Christ is not the center of individual family members' lives. Remember, unity doesn't just right. happen in general. It happens one-on-one -on -one as we unite with Christ, and then he allows us, or he breaks down those walls between us and other people. So this love comes from Jesus. And again, this is the, as you mentioned, David, the agape love which is the self-sacrificing love. It's the, the love that comes from principle. Again, I mentioned this a minute ago, but it's so important. There will be days, there are days, when you are not going to feel like uh, loving your spouse or your children or whoever. There will be days and times when you don't feel that surge of emotion uh, that may have gotten you into this relationship, that may have started your family. But that doesn't matter. Love is not an emotion. No matter what Disney tells you, you know, follow your heart. That's the message we keep hearing from the world. Love is a principle. It's a choice. It's a decision. And um, again, that, of course, is what Jesus demonstrated for us there. He didn't feel like 
uh, in those final hours of his life. He didn't have Im overwhelming emotions that just led him to to die on the cross. It was a choice and a decision in in the face of those emotions. And this is where agape love really becomes operative when it runs against what I feel like doing. Will the love of God within me give me the strength to make the right choice to act on that principle? And uh, this is where uh, families can become united together when we start doing this. Absolutely. David. And Tim, uh, I would like to read with you a read, you know, uh, for, for our friends in, in the home that are watching or actually listening to this program. Um, in Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, I find a beautiful verses there that will, t will really tell us how the Lord can and will do that in us. It says, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. And I mm. believe that, you know, these, these two verses are very, you know, to me, very special because it brings you the, this, this assurance, this, this confidence that the Lord will touch you. I mean, have you thought about that? The Lord really touching your life, touching your heart. And this is where you have to recognize, you know, the human heart, our, our carnal heart will do evil things. That is the truth. You know, the heart is uh, wicked, you know, and deceitful and above all things and desperately wicked. So we know that the Bible describes our hearts, our human hearts as evil by nature. They are, they are you know, they only look, want to do their own will. And that is why, as you mentioned there before, that, you know, the concept of people following their heart is really a selfish desire is only doing their own pleasures. But God is telling us that he's willing to touch our lives, touch our hearts. And then notice, and the Lord, verse 5, direct your hearts. So he wants that heart to be touched by his power, by his gospel, by Christ, that he will direct our hearts to do the right thing, to do and go into the love of God. So when you are directed by the Lord to go into the love of God, what your heart will be have, what your heart will, you know, seek will be to do his will and to do those things, which is to love others with that selfless love that I got the love that God wants to put in our hearts. So I believe this is a beautiful promise that sort of points out that God will give you, will touch our lives so that we may be able to have his love and be directed to his love. And that way have a, ultimately that unity in our families that we need. Yeah, amen. And you know, the reality is that as we make those choices, as we make that surrender to Christ, um, the emotions and the feelings follow. And so instead of Absolutely. us being led by our feelings, now our feelings are reinforcing the choice that we have made. And that's an important amen. principle that we need to remember is that uh, those, <laughs> when we make the decision based on principle uh, and, and empowered by the love of God, then the feelings follow after that. I want to just touch again on the verse we read a moment ago, 1 Thessalonians 3.12. Again, the Lord make you to increase and abound in love. The promise here is not that the Lord will give us just enough love to get by, just enough to barely hold together. What he wants to do is to pour out uh, an abundance of love on uh, our families and so that we abound in this love and it continues to increase and increase. And uh, we know that what the Lord has promised, he is able to do. And so we need to pray, we need to seek, we need to work for these blessings because the Lord definitely wants to give them to us. Well, we are out of time for today. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you've been blessed by the time spent in God's word. And we look forward to studying again with you tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.